This is the Fertile Mindset Podcast, where we explore all the emotional aspects of fertility to support you on your path to parenthood. My name is Sarah Holland. I'm the Fertile Mindset Coach and a mother to two children after my own fertility challenges. I hope you find all the support and inspiration you need within this podcast to carry you forward on your fertility journey towards your own successful outcome. It's also my wish that through listening to these episodes, you rediscover how to enjoy life now and live it to the full while you wait for your baby. Now, let's begin today's episode. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Fertile Mindset podcast for the new year. It's lovely to be back and talking to you again after what was a longer break over Christmas than I intended. Unfortunately, I had one virus after another ending with flu on Christmas Eve, which meant that I missed out on Christmas completely, as well as getting very behind with the podcast and other work. But now I'm feeling great and so happy to be back with lots of exciting plans and changes ahead for Fertile Mindset this year. But for now, we have a few episodes of this interview series remaining, starting with my chat with Emma Roberts today. Emma is an EFT master and co-founder of the EFT Centre in London. Almost 20 years ago, when I was a newly qualified EFT practitioner, Emma's own specialism in fertility support was a key part of my education and exploration into this topic. In fact, attending a training session on fertility EFT led by Emma was a pivotal moment for me in specialising in fertility for the last two decades. It was wonderful to talk more with Emma on the podcast about what a powerful technique EFT is and the many ways it can make a positive difference when facing fertility issues or any other challenging moments in life. If you would like to learn more about how EFT could support you, do check out my one-to-one support options at fertilemindset.com. And if you'd like to chat to find out if EFT and my support are right for you, get in touch at mail at fertilemindset.com and we'll arrange a time to talk. An initial chat is completely free of charge and without any commitment. And as I record this, I do have a couple of spots available, so it's a great time to get in touch. My email again is mail, that's M-A-I-L, at fertilemindset.com. Okay, so now it's time to hear my conversation with Emma on EFT tapping and its role in fertility support. So welcome, Emma. Really, really lovely to have you on the Fertile Mindset podcast with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the invitation. It's lovely to see you again, speak to you again anyway. Yeah, it was a few months ago, wasn't it, that we we last spoke at the summit um, that I organised that was all about EFT and fertility. And you felt, well, you were right at the top of my list of people to invite then. Um, Because, yeah, my my kind of knowledge of you um, and when I first met you way back, I don't know what year it must have been, probably getting on for 18 years ago, 17, 18 years ago, was when... Yeah, you gave a talk at an EFT event for EFT practitioners all about fertility. And it really, really caught my imagination because that's when I was starting to explore what I could do with fertility. And it was it was really lovely to to hear from someone who was already working in this field and, and getting such amazing results as well. So so thank you for that little intro that you gave me many, many years ago. <laughs> That's my pleasure. <laughs> oh, and it's, it's lovely to have you back here and we can continue our, our conversation. Um, what would be really nice to start with, Emma, would be to hear a little bit about um, how you got into the world of tapping. How did you discover EFT tapping and what kind of called to you about it? Why, why did it draw you in? Uh, I did, well before I discovered EFT I was already a clinical hypnotherapist and NLP master prac and I was doing a group supervision I was at a group supervision day actually with Subia who's my colleague at the EFT centre and the guy who was running it um, Phil Parker said I just want to show you a video and he showed us this little video of somebody being with Gary Craig who's the founder of EFT working with somebody with actually a blood phobia and clearing it it just disappeared and it was really interesting because soon i both thought well how what the question actually in supervision was well what is he doing you know is he using language is he using you know what is this tapping thing and nobody could answer it (laughs) 
so um, anyway, it led us down a path. Sue and I did training over, over in the UK and then also went over to train with Gary. We watched his many, many DVD sets. So oh, yes, I did, I did all of those DVD yeah. sets as well. They were phenomenal, weren't they? <laughs> and I said, you know what, they're still valid. I think they still have value. Absolutely. Um, you know, so we often suggest to our students that they, they study them. So kind of, I think, I think it just took us down a path, both of us actually, and we ended up doing Gary's master, master's programme in the UK, which was quite an, <laughs> quite an ordeal, quite stressful, but we seemed to pass that. And they're integrated with our practice. And I think that's the joy of the tapping, actually. It will integrate into whatever you're already doing. And also, what we learned from Gary was that he really wanted to have a tapper in every household. And the, base, the basis of that was that actually it's easy to learn. So, you know, you and I can sit here chatting about it or we can do the, the summit like you did before. And people who have no training in this sort of thing can take it off and get results for themselves, which is so powerful because... You know, if you're with a practitioner or if you're in therapy, you might be there for an hour a week, but the stresses and the triggers might happen anytime. And this gives you a tool whereby you can empower yourself to work through your own responses and change your reaction to things. So you become less reactive and more kind of proactive, I suppose, want for, want for a better word. Mm. That's how we got into it, how I got, well, both of us got into it. It's interesting, is it, when you see a demonstration like you did of a blood phobia, I think you said, and you see the results come, you see that kind of instant release of stress or fear or whatever it may be, but it's just a simple, yeah, tapping, using your own fingertips, tapping on points on your face and upper body and hands, using words. It, it is quite mysterious looking at first, isn't it, when you don't know what's going on behind it? It was magical. Of course, there was no science yeah. behind it at that point. There was no research behind it. Now we understand a lot more about what's going on. But, you know, this was 2000, so, you know, yeah. nobody, and this was just a small group of people doing something a bit odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's and I, really blossomed. I, yeah, it really blossomed for you as well. And I know you've trained many, many people, many of my friends and colleagues, actually, you, you and Sue trained at the EFT Centre in London and online as well. Um, I'd love to know from, hear from you, Emma, as a, as a trainer and, you know, someone who's worked with Gary Craig directly as well, the founder of EFT, something that I think can be really useful is like a, an easy way of explaining well what is EFT doing you know we're using our fingertips to tap on points and it brings about this amazing quite magical looking change but how do you describe that process to to your trainees um basically it's kind of calming the nervous system it's you know it works with, with vagal vagal theory it's, it's just a way of releasing tensions that it, I mean, you can go down the whole route of this. This is half Chinese traditional Chinese medicine, half Western psychological approach. But it seems to be something about the combination of the tapping and the words that we use, the language that we use, that affects change. And I, I think, it has a relaxation effect. It also, I think, has a slightly. Uh, some people might be scared by this, and I don't mean them to be, but a slightly hypnotic, as in mm. trance-like effect. Yeah. So you can. There's something about, and there's also people say, oh, it's just a distraction. Well, I think there is an element of distraction in it, but I don't think that's actually what's going on at all. It's just a kind of a piece of it. But it allows us to communicate with the unconscious mind in a way that kind of, that's different, even different from hypnotherapy, actually, um, because the, the client, the person who's using it, has much more of an active input. But you'll find if you're kind of, when you're tapping, you'll suddenly start a memory will pop into your mind or a person will pop into your mind and what you'll find is that that's kind of relevant to what you're working with but if you try to think about it and work it out analytically and consciously you'll probably never have got there so you know i think it calms the nervous system enough to allow our unconscious mind to communicate with us easily and unconscious mind has our solutions Mm, it is interesting how that happens isn't it it's almost as if you're kind of peeling the layers back isn't it you know starting with whatever's most presenting and the, the current stress and, and what is ever on the on someone's mind but what is underneath it and you're right the tapping does seem to help us access that that kind of truth and that root and and what is really going on and when you said you said there when you were describing it how it's such a useful technique to use with other modalities mm -hmm. and I think and when we start talking about fertility which obviously is the, you know, the hot topic of what we're talking about with EFT today um 
people usually are doing something, not always, but often are doing something for their mindset, their emotional well-being, their fertility. They might be um, seeing a fertility counsellor, for example, or using hypnosis tracks or meditating. Mm -hmm. And I think EFT is a is a partner to all of those, isn't it, in different ways? I completely agree. And it's, a, it's also a partner to mainstream medicine. We, we train quite a lot of nurses and consultants have done over the years to integrate with that too, because there's nothing better than having a, a calm, calm client, calm patient. Mm. So I think it integrates with, with everything actually, to be honest. I haven't, haven't found an area or a field where it doesn't support and help. Yeah, yeah, and you're right about the medical field kind of very much enjoying the effects that they see in their patients mm. with EFT because yeah, a, a calmer, more relaxed, mm. more open and, and present fertility patient is you know going to have such a more positive experience of their treatment and and potentially the outcome as well so so yeah it's it's an all-round um popular thing to do is it whether you understand what's happening what's happening or not it's the results that are important it really is and i think it's a two-way thing too you can do the tapping to calm yourself down and to deal with what's going on in the here and now and follow youtube videos and all that sort of thing which is really really useful and has a place and then there's a the deeper therapeutic work um, which is where the practitioners come in. So mm. there's, you know, there is, well, I know there's place for both. Definitely. Yeah, I like, I like what you said about Gary saying that there should be a tapper in every household. Um, what an amazing thing that would be, you know, and, and it's, it's giving those tools directly to people so that they can use them when the unexpected happens. You know, you don't always want to have to make an appointment to see somebody or, or wait that period of time to deal with uh, an emotional challenge that has happened. Sorry. So, it, yeah, it's very empowering to have it literally at your fingertips, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. It should be taught in schools. Mm, yes, it's starting to, isn't it, here and there. But it's it, it would bring in, but it's a slow yeah. process. Yeah. It would be wonderful. It was a mainstream thing, wouldn't it, that people grew up with learning and using. Absolutely well, wonderful. Be, yeah. The world would be a very different place, I think, if that was the case. Yes. Yes. Very true. Now, I know that you work in many different areas, Emma. I know you've got lots of kind of special interests um, and it would be good to hear about actually the diversity and the different things that you use EFT on. Um, perhaps before we talk about fertility and, and dig into that a little bit more, but obviously you train people, you, you have a busy practice yourself, you've written books. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your, what you see using EFT um, having a, you know, a really useful effect with and what kind of areas I know it's limitless. I know there's so much it can be used with, but, you know, touching on some areas that perhaps people will be able to relate to. Um, well, the other big area that I work with is serious disease and particular ca particularly cancer. I used to mm -hmm. do, um, run group sessions at the Breast Cancer Haven for a long time. Um, it's very useful for that, that kind of end of the spectrum of health as well. You can help people take a bit of control and empowerment about their situation, work through diagnosis, work through side effects of treatment. Very, actually very similar, a lot of parallels to IVF actually, but, you know, managing the state as it, as, as it happens, whether it's injecting yourself, whether it's going for chemo, whatever it happens to be. Um, it's very effective from that perspective. Uh, and also obviously as a tool for people to, to have in there in their toolbox to take with them to appointments and things. Uh, I also, well, I don't, I, it's quite hard actually, Sarah, because I don't know that's everything. Um, training wise, we train, obviously there are three levels of EFT training, introductory practitioner level, and then um, the advanced levels for practitioners. I run those, I run a diploma in integrated energy techniques, which brings together a lot of other kind of factors that go into what I, th I think is effective therapy or what we think is effective therapy, such as hypnotherapy, the work of Baron Katie, metaphysical framework. Um, gosh, I could go on forever. Lots and lots. Yeah. <laughs> it is limitless, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's why you know, you're asked the question, can I use EFT with this? Would it work with that? And yeah, the answer is always, well, let's just try it and see what happens because yeah, it's anywhere that, that, the, the healing that the clarity that you know release of tension whatever it may be can be helped it's it's absolutely worth worth trying this this tapping technique so with fertility um I know that's one of your interests and and as I say I heard you speak about that 
many years ago. Um, it's interesting how you saw the parallels there, you know, with a, a cancer diagnosis and treatment. Um, I and have the parallels of the shock and, mm. and the, you know, the injecting yourself, possibly drugs, all those sorts of things are parallel. Obviously, outcomes are different, but the, the managing your state, your state of being as you experience these these moments is, I yeah. think, incredibly powerful and empowering. Because in fertility treatment, like with cancer treatment, people are doing things to you, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All the time they're doing things, you've become a kind of a medical vehicle, really. Um, so it's helpful to begin to reclaim some of that power for yourself. And even the fact that we can make those comparisons and see the parallels, it just shows how how shocking and strange it can be to suddenly be on this medicalized path mm. when you were trying for a baby, which... For most people, unless they already knew they would have fertility problems, most people just embark on that thinking, yeah, this will be this will be fun. This will be easy. You know, they're just exactly. daydreaming about the baby and the nursery and names and so on and their future as a family and wouldn't imagine all the different steps that could could ha you know, have to happen to get to that point. No, absolutely. And, it, and it's I mean, it's horrible. I think, you know, it's shocking. It's emotionally grueling. Sex takes on a completely different kind of sense. You know, it becomes a chore. I have to do this now. Or the fertility treatments, you know, such as IVF, which you're not meant to have sex even. So relationships suffer. I mean, it's it's huge actually. I think, and and if you can kind of get a handle to help yourself, and and you know, I'm talking as though this is just the woman, but actually, men too, in any form of relationship, you know straight, gay, bi, binary, non-binary, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's about empowering yourself on that path because anybody who wants a baby and wants to create a family should be given as many opportunities as possible to do that in whatever way. And getting to that place can be a stressful journey too. Getting to making those decisions about, okay, this is the path I'm going to follow, this is how it's going to go, let alone the actual medicalized procedure, it's, it's really, really difficult and emotionally stressful, you know, as well as physically. Yeah, I think it's really important that we we acknowledge that and and don't try and, you know, um, just gloss over it and, and say that a few relaxation techniques will help or whatever. It's actually about being really honest with yourself, isn't it, first of all, and and recognizing how difficult this really can be and the impact it can have. Um, there's not, often not a lot of comparison out there, though, is there? You know, you don't often have many friends or, or people that you know who are going through fertility treatment, IVF investigations or whatever. So it's it can feel quite lonely. And, and you're wondering, am I, am I not coping with this well? Should I be this stressed? You know, it's, it's tough, isn't it, when you're doing it on your own? I mean, my question would be, why wouldn't you be? Mm. Um, yeah. It's a huge thing. You know the whole your whole future and how your future maps out depends on this process whatever the process is you choose to go down so it is you know it's life-changing so from that perspective why wouldn't you be stressed but the stress doesn't i wouldn't say doesn't help it's better for you to have a calm calmer kind of approach to it and tap but there will be stresses along the way Obviously, so if you've got a tool that you can manage them with, and I'm not going to say EFT is going to clear everything, but you know it will help in areas well like like the fear of the medication, like the fear of the injections, like some people have fear of hospitals, fears of doctors, the, the scenario of the diagnosis when your doctor tells you that there's a problem, you know even we're backing up from that even when you realise that maybe there's a problem, because there's a, there's an inherent kind of I think an inherent sense of failure, which is totally mis obviously misguided because this isn't something you've done to yourself or whatever. It's a situational thing. Um, but, but all these layers can be helped by tapping through them. Preferably, I think, well, I probably would say this, but talking to somebody else who can hold you in a safe space if you want to kind of really explore and, and get underneath this. Um, that's that's the kind of that's when you're working on the negative side of it but there is also the point when where you can combine the tapping with sort of visualization skills for instance to 
to get what you want, to manifest the outcome that you want. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, every time this works, you just imagine. But if you vividly imagine the outcome you want, and when I say that, I mean literally step by step. I want, you know, I want to have 14 follicles, I have 14 follicles, I want, you know, six healthy embryos, and that vividly imagining that. And then when you when you think about it, noticing in your head whether there are any yes buts, any negative thoughts going underneath it. And if there are, you pull them out and then you tap on those, you address them. You don't pretend they're not there, you don't put the carpet over the rubble, you address the rubble and tap to, to clear those thoughts. And, and your mindset will change. I mean, you can, it's a fertile mindset, that's what we're creating <laughs> all the time. Mm. It's fascinating, isn't it, how far that can go as well, because you're right, you know, our usual, for a lot of us, um, uh, way to, to handle those thoughts, those feelings, those beliefs that, that aren't feeling good is just to push them to one side and ignore them and try and cover them up with a positive thought and, and try and, you know, believe that everything will be okay. But if they're there, like I like that rubble under the carpet, you know, you, you're really going to feel it every time you walk over that carpet, you know, you're really going to notice that it's still there. Um, and I find, don't you find as well, you know, it's at those most vulnerable times, it might be during the two week wait or, or when there is a, a negative test, for example, that, that all those, those fears and worries can come back if they haven't been addressed. Exactly. And I, and I think we're unrealistic not to think that they might come back anyway. To some extent mm. anyway. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, if they do come back or when they do come back, if you work through the roots of them, they will be easier to clear, to, to mm. pass through. I'm not going to say, sit here and say we're always going to have positive thoughts when negative things happen. Of course we're not. But they won't kind of take root in the same way. You'll, yeah. more, you'll be able to you'll respond differently and be more in a position to take action and move and move forward in whatever way that that is for you so. yeah it's like if you've already played it through in your mind and gone through those worst case scenarios use the tapping to bring forward a perspective that supports it's it's kind of been a trial run i guess hasn't it so that if that there's something should happen that knocks you off balance again you you don't feel like you're back at square one it feels kind of familiar and you've got your techniques ready and you you have that confidence in yourself that you can overcome whatever thoughts or or emotions come up which I think that's that's really important isn't it Emma to have that that confidence in yourself and your own resilience hugely important and also you know exploring things like the self-blame that goes along with mm. you go through this or or when it doesn't work all that stuff and none of it's true but we treat it to these thoughts like it's true it's my fault i must have done something wrong whatever no it, it's not anybody's actual fault which is in a way a bit harder because you can't that implies you can't control it but those feelings of self-blame and things are just there's no point to them mm. um and tapping to clear those and to see 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 the see the truth rather than the illusion i think is really important see who you are despite the problem rather than who you are with the problem if that makes any sense to you i like yes i like that it's it's like seeing seeing yourself stand alone isn't it and remembering who you are within this exactly. because it can take over can't it especially once you're a fertility patient and you know your age is being looked at and and all the kind of metrics there mm -hmm. you f you forget yourself within it and you also don't have a lot of time or space for anything else it can be all consuming can't it the research and the the steps and the procedures absolutely and also you can begin to feel a bit like a number like a statistic i mean you know, these fertility clinics do amazing, amazing work, but they have sadly a lot of patients. So you do get whizzed through quite quickly. You don't necessarily see the same person each time. You know, it can feel very dehumanizing to a certain extent. So if you, if you can tap through those feelings and see it for what it is and think about the outcome that you want, because you're there for the science, basically, hmm. um, then, then you are much more empowered. I keep coming back to that word, but I think that's the all-important word here. It's about empowering yourself despite the storm around you. Yeah, definitely. And I like that fact that you you see the doctor, the clinic, there for the science. You know, they're the ones that have that specialism for the treatment that you you need. And and yeah, and remember to get the the support and whatever else you need from elsewhere. Um, Take, build, yeah. your, build your team and take the best from everywhere. 
you know, you're, you're in charge. You take the best, go to the best medical place, get the best medical treatment and the science, mm -hmm. and then get the best support elsewhere. And the, one of the best ways of supporting yourself is actually literally supporting yourself using the tapping. Doesn't mean necessarily to, because it's very expensive to, to treatment too. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go and go pay a fortune to go and see somebody to talk about your stuff every week. In fact, it really doesn't mean that. Going to see somebody possibly once, twice, three times to have get the tools to support mm -hmm. you is, is is fine. I, I don't, you know, because money is obviously also an issue for a lot of people with this. So. Yeah, that's one of the, the huge benefits of EFT, isn't there? It's that it is something that you can do yourself. We talked about that before, you know, literally at your fingertips and and doesn't have to cost a further penny, you know, and you can still still have the benefits of it for everyday stress management. Now, when we're talking about the science, we're talking about treatment and and you touched on it earlier about how many opportunities there are out there for people to have their babies now and to create their families more now than ever, isn't it? You know, with the advances in in what can be done with with fertility treatment and donor treatment and many people traveling abroad for donor treatment or embryo adoption um surrogacy you know it, it's it feels endless at times the different potential options that are out there but of course they're not all for everybody you know it's, it's the decision making process is the first part isn't it when you start to look at what how will i have my family and again for that it's that kind of working through the fears of each option, the, the anxieties around each option, so you then get a, the sort of the fog lifts of the overwhelm and you get clarity through. So what, what works, what's your, what works for you? You know, you or if you're in a relationship, you and your partner. But it, it has to be a kind of, you know, everyone will want to advise you. And actually the only person who can give you the true advice is you. You can take bits of it from everybody, obviously the medical model and everybody, you can get the opportunities, you can work out what your options are. But to come to that place of clarity of decision, again, that's another area I think the tapping is hugely helpful in. Helpful. It's about what we were talking about a minute ago, it's about reconnecting to yourself, the, the self that's the true you that knows knows what's right or wrong for you. I think that can be hard to believe sometimes, can't it? When when you've been perhaps a couple of years or more, you know, on this journey and you've done so much research, you've read so many books, talked to different doctors, like you said, have lots of advice from friends that, that they think you should do this or that. And it, it, it feels like you're outsourcing the decision making sometimes, doesn't it? You know, if enough people tell me to go down a certain route, perhaps I'll do that. But actually it it, it doesn't doesn't always feel right you know it doesn't it doesn't mean it's your path it doesn't mean that you could feel comfortable with it um so yeah it's really important isn't it to notice what's coming up and I think with something as different and often quite alien as as going through fertility treatment you know it might be something that someone has never considered doing they don't know anyone that's had IVF never imagined they would be there there can be fears and worries that have you know definite a definite place and a reason that they're there but it is possible to for some people to remove those and turn it around so that you can feel comfortable you know with the most invasive treatment perhaps and the most unlikely way that you thought you would build your family but then if you you know discover actually like you said I think your own your own true advice you know what is it I really really want here and it can be quite surprising at times can't it how how clear it can become when you use tapping yeah, I mean, I, I do think that the tapping, what it actually fundamentally does is it reconnects us to our gut instinct. Yeah. And that's that's what we all need to be working from, really, our gut and our heart, not external factors. And so, yes, I agree with you completely. <laughs> yeah, and we need the research, obviously. You know, it's you, you, you can't make these decisions alone when you don't know what the options are and, no, and no. how the clinics work, but... No, I'm yeah. talking about the emotional side of it, actually. That's right. That's right. Checking in, checking in with us and trusting our own opinion and our own thoughts and that gut instinct. We have to learn to do that because, you know, the majority of us actually have been trained out of that during school and mm. as we grow up. Um, you know, we're, we're told, we're taught in a way not to trust our feelings. How many children go to school with a tummy ache when actually what that tummy ache means is I, I need to stay at home for a day or two. I'm having a rough mm. time school you know it's um i think i think we're getting better at it but we need to listen to ourselves yeah the human evolution is ongoing isn't it <laughs> oh, 
Absolutely. I do think it's changing quite rapidly, actually. I think mm. it's like podcasts and Instagram and things, once they have their downside, also have a very positive impact as well. I'm showing people what's on offer out there, what, what, you know, what other people are doing and things. Yeah, that chance for reflection, isn't it? And to, to think about something differently. And and I often think how this this journey that we go on to, to have our babies, those of us, it takes longer. And what we learn about ourselves and how we do need to, like you say, reconnect with that gut instinct and everything else that really can benefit us. What, you know, great preparation also that could be to become a parent and to be learning those skills now, it's never too late, you know, that potentially you can pass on to your children later and model to your children. And, and it will help you have a more positive experience of parenting as well, I think. You know, that's that's what I see from the, the people I support through pregnancy and onward to, to parenting is that they carry on using tapping. They carry on using it through pregnancy, through labor, through the sleepless nights with a newborn and and the, the difficult decisions that come up with being a parent every day, you know? so. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a tool for life. It is a tool for life, and it's a tool for children too. You know, little ones can tap, you know, magic buttons, tapping those points, and um, they're they're great because they don't have any of the resistance that us adults do. Yeah, <laughs> it's something that makes them feel a bit better. So you know, teach it to your children when they arrive. That's right. Definitely lovely. So I know um, that there are various ways that we can be in touch with you Emma and I really wanted to I know you mentioned it earlier but to give details about the wonderful training that you do as well because I know that many of our podcast listeners are interested in EFT um, on that kind of professional level and, and wondering is this something that I could train in myself to either just use by myself with friends family or to to have a, a practice and and to incorporate it with other techniques like you just said as well so could you let us know how we can easily find you online um, and yeah, a little bit about the, the EFT Centre. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, online our website is the the EFT Centre or lowercase dot com, um, and on there you'll the all our different trainings and workshops that we do, and also if anybody was interested in booking an appointment, they're on there. We also have a list of our integrated energy technique practitioners who are up for, obviously up for doing sessions as well. Um, all our trainings, all our professional trainings are accredited by um, EFT International, which is the biggest governing body for EFT in the world. Um, we're quite involved with them ourselves, have been for many, many years. Um, so it does come as, as a professional professional training. To, let, to become a practitioner, it's actually only three days initial training. Um, and then there's case studies and practice sessions and mentoring that comes after that. But it's, you know, whether you've got loads of experience therapeutically or medically or whatever, or whether you come start completely from scratch, it really doesn't matter. Um, we kind of guide you through it and our, it's our job to help you understand and to be excellent at it. So, and I say, oh, that's Sue Beer and myself who run the EFT Centre. We also have, for anybody who hasn't got any therapeutic experience, we do also run our Diploma in Integrated Energy Techniques, which is a dual qualification with an NLP practitioner certification as well um, that's about it Sarah I'm not very good at marketing <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be I think tapping markets itself doesn't it you know it's yeah. it's a phenomenal technique and I it, I think the the only thing I don't like about tapping, if, if I had to say something, is that it does look a little bit silly at times. You know, it does look to the untrained eye. You think, what on earth is that about? You know, what's this tapping? And and it can go one of two ways. It can either turn people off because they think it just looks strange. And how could that possibly work? Which is how I felt for a couple of years before I finally gave in and tried it. Um, or it can kind of pique people's interest, can't it? Think like it did for you. You know, I, I see it in action. I see it working what on earth is going on there you know and other than that other than that kind of obstacle about how funny this can look tapping points on your face and so on um yeah I think tapping completely sells itself because it's it's just such a wonderful easy very effective technique to use um and like we said you know for for it's serious illness cancer treatment fertility those real obstacles in life it gives such 
opportunity, doesn't it? Such reconnection with yourself and your strength and your clarity, which is, is priceless. So thank you so much, Emma, for all the work you do and the training that you do tirelessly, including you were telling me on the hottest day that the UK has ever had. You were still training. So thank you so much for all the work. <laughs> oh it's yeah. been very hot thank you so much for having me you are very welcome it's been lovely to chat to you thanks a lot emma my pleasure I'm so pleased you're listening to the Fertile Mindset podcast and now I would love to invite you to join us in the Fertile Mindset Sanctuary the Sanctuary is my fertility support membership which is focused on taking care of you and helping you enjoy your life while you wait for your baby in the sanctuary i'll guide you through using an amazing technique called eft or tapping and you'll soon be feeling less stressed and more joyful if you're not already in the sanctuary do come and join us today because the best time to start receiving support on your fertility journey is always right now honestly it makes such a difference to have good quality emotional support and techniques that you can pick up and use yourself whenever you need them go to fertilemindset.com slash sanctuary to join us today. I look forward to hopefully seeing you there and at the next episode of the Fertile Mindset Podcast.